In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 80s epic laser portrait, but this time with a twist, we're gonna do a head swap with the cat and the model, uh, which in this case is me. This has been my main profile picture for a few years, and I get a lot of comments on it and people asking about it, so I thought I would do a detailed tutorial on how you can make this happen uh, with your pets or any other projects that you might have. So here is the original, and here are the base images. Um, this is me. Apologize for the chest hair out in advance, uh, but what I found out while I was actually shooting this is that my own beard interfered with where the, uh, the cat went, and it was much easier to uh, forgo that and point my beard up at the sky to make room for that. So here's the base image where we're going to put the cat into. I've also got the picture of Mousekowitz selected. I'm going to use this one um, flipped for me in the background. And then I've also got my laser overlay right here. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab um, that shot of Mousekowitz. And for this one, you're just going to drag a selection box around. You can paste the whole image if you want. You're just going to have to mask it out later, though. Um, so I hit Control or Command C to copy this. And then I'm going to drag it over to my base image, and I'm going to paste it in. For scaling the objects, I like to lower the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. And then hit Control or Command T to adjust the size. Um, so in this case, I'm going to make it so that the eyes are somewhat um, similar. I'm going to use that as my guide for the scale, but I'm also going to bring the cat head a little further down uh, so it's not sticking up like, you know, too awkwardly tall. So we're going to go with this uh, positioning right about here. And so we've got a couple issues already that we're going to need to address in this one, which is that my head is sticking out behind the cat, and then also there's not enough coverage um, down here to fill the suit. So I'm going to grab from uh, right around here, just with a selection tool, and then I'm going to hit um, Control T, and now uh, I also have to hold down Shift to keep this box from keeping the same proportions. And I'm just going to drag this down and stretch it until it goes past the bottom of the opening there. And then for myself, I'm gonna go back to this background layer. Actually, we'll do this on a fresh copy just in case we, we need it. So I created a, a blank layer right here. And I'm going to add a, let's use a clone stamp. And I'm just going to grab a big old section of this background from over here. And I'm going to basically just paint that over. Whoops. And I went a little too far. I painted my own head back in there. Um, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the cat layer visibility off for just a moment here. And then I'm going to take the uh, heel brush. I'm going to pick some gray from here. And I'm just going to go around this edge to kind of smooth out those transitions and make it seamless there. All right, so that should work out um, just fine. So now we've got the cat head in place and we can start masking this out. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can use selections and mask this out. I find with hair and things like that, sometimes you end up just getting in there with a brush anyway. Um, but to give you an example, like you could go in here with, um, say, the quick select, and I could select my, my chest there and then invert this, whoops, uh, and then invert this selection and then, and then paint. But I'm just going to do this one by hand so you guys don't have to worry about any fancy techniques or anything like that. So I'm going to add a layer mask to the cat layer. I'm going to hit B for brush. And I'm going to make sure that I've got the black selected over here for the mask. And I'm just going to roughly uh, paint out what I need here. And I'm going to go back and fix the edges up 
uh, and appropriately fluff everything up with the cap. So one thing that's super handy when you guys are doing uh, masks or any kind of painting like this is don't do too much in, in one piece, especially when it's more detailed stuff, because if you do have to hit control Z or command Z to go backwards, um, sometimes it's nice not to have to redo the whole thing. It's easier to redo it in smaller pieces. All right, so for the edges up here, I'm gonna go to a much softer brush just so that this blends easier. around the cat's head because I definitely don't want to cut into any of the fur that we've got going on. All right, so at this point I can bring the opacity back up and kind of see where we're at. Um, the X button is going to switch between your foreground and background color and this is a really handy shortcut when you are working with masks so that you can quickly uh, reverse one. Like right here I'm going to add some of this cat hair back in. I'm going to switch up to a harder brush and I'm going to add some more of this stuff in and then I'm going to hit the X where I added this part that obscures the suit. And so we're just working this mask to show the parts that we want. I'm going to go a little softer here. Oops, that was not X, that was Command. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go even softer here with these hairs just to try to even this out. And then I'm gonna get in here with a pretty hard edge, like right around 90, and get right up to the edge so that I can cover any human flesh color that's hiding back there and just kind of click through that edge and refine everything and on this one it looks like I need to go the other direction so I'm going to hit X and mask this out alright so for a portrait like this it's not really essential that everything be completely perfect it is supposed to be funny so if there's minor stuff it's not going to be a big deal the comedic impact is going to uh, vastly outweigh any small mistakes uh, that you make and it'll all be pretty much just fine uh, it's kind of covering the lapel there but it's okay whoops let's see how the overall look is here all right, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna go kind of soft and, oops, so uh, what happened right there is I switched myself off of the mask layer. That was just some straight up white paint. I add some more cat here and over here, and then I'm gonna just hit the X and go back with a softer brush than I did the first time. I like that look a little bit better. And I'm just gonna try to round this stuff out. There we go. All right, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I think I am plenty happy with that. We'll do a quick comparison uh, with this one. I'd say that's close enough. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is drop in the um, the head for me so I'm going to select just this part and I'm gonna hit command C to copy that over and then I'm gonna hit uh, controller command V to paste it in here and then I'm also going to I'm gonna flip this and this isn't something that I typically do or would recommend but I had this picture handy and I didn't have to look for one or shoot a new one but the problem with just flipping someone is that we are not symmetrical and anyone that knows you might look at that picture and feel like something's wrong with it and not know why um, but that is why because you don't look like you and then I'm going to stretch this out uh, lower the opacity so I can see kind of where everything is all right so I think that position that positioning looks pretty good right there so I'm going to double click to drop that into place. I'm going to add a layer mask 
onto here. And then for this one, I'm gonna go with a super soft uh, brush, hitting B. And we're gonna just, we're gonna mask it around this. I'm just painting the mask on. Okay, so there is the ghost image. I'm gonna hit uh, V to move this around a little bit. I think that positioning looks pretty good. Maybe lower the opacity even just a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. So next up, I'm gonna grab my laser overlay, and on this one, I'm gonna hit Control or Command A to select all, and copy it, and just drop it in. And so there's the base overlay. And now whether you want the lasers to go in front of your person or object in the back is kind of a matter of preference. Um, for me, I kind of don't want it to go right through the eye. So I'm just kind of paying attention to see where all of these go. And you can drag it around um, or stretch it pretty much any which way to get those where you want them to go. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think on this one I am going to remove the laser from the view in the back, I think. What did I do on this one? On this one it's right through my face. All right, so we'll, we'll leave that for now. On this layer I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask and I'm gonna get my brush back out. And for this one I'm gonna go with about 80% on the hardness. This changes with the brush size. You kind of get the feel for it um, as you do it. But I'm basically going to line up that edge as close as I can. Be careful not to cut into the glow. And we're just kind of trying to make a nice line. And then we can paint over the whole thing. Um, yeah, all the way to this sleeve. So I'm going to line that one up. Now, if you use too hard of a brush here, it can create a hard line. So it just takes a little bit of practice, depending on the size of your image and the content, to get that um, cut right. Again, these are things that don't quite have to be perfect because most people are going to be laughing too hard to be super critical of your work. And this one, we're going to same thing right up to the edge. Go to the edge here, and we're gonna leave that little piece where it's going behind my arm. All right, that looks pretty good for the parts around the suit. And then we've got these going across Mouskowitz's face here. I'm just gonna paint those off. And then this little one by the ear. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna shrink the brush down and maybe go a little softer to make up for it. All right, so let's check Let's check that out. Whoops, that is the wrong zero shape button. There we go, here's full screen. Um, yeah, so there it is. Um, the, the little parts could be tweaked and adjusted from there. Um, it's kind of up to the user how much opacity you have back here for the ghost image, but somewhere around 40 to 50% I find is usually um, pretty good and I may I may even drag this out a little bit bigger and then move it so my eyes are back in the opening again I just really want to avoid like you don't want the laser going right through an eye it's kind of distracting that way so that's pretty good pretty good position right there 
All right, and then so last up is I'm going to crop this and I'm gonna just select the one to one square ratio um, since that's the way I shot it and also I'm going to stick with that. And I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit on the bottom because I know that you can see, um, I don't remember exactly what it was in the studio, but there was something there when I shot this image that was causing issues. And so I'm just gonna bring it in and tighten it up a tiny bit. Now uh, from here, um, if this is your own file, well, you know what, I'll just do it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and save this one and it's gonna save as a PSD, or you could also save it as a layered TIFF. And this is just to keep everything intact in case you wanna go back and change it later. I'm gonna call this one Laser Selfie 2023 and hit save. Um, now for the image that you're going to share with the world, you're gonna to wanna to go to layer and flatten image. And then if it's going on social media, I'd recommend going to image size, hitting resample, and then changing the measurements to pixels. And if it's already smaller, you don't need to resize it up, but if it's bigger than uh, 2048 on the long edge, you're gonna to wanna to resize so that Facebook and other platforms don't smash it down. So I use 2048 on all of mine, and you can see I've got the ratio unlocked here. So typically that's gonna be locked and you'll put in 2048 and it's gonna keep your proportions. The resolution makes absolutely no difference here. The key thing you want is 2048 and 2048. And then for the resample, bicubic sharper is going to give you better detail in your image. And then click okay. And now I'm going to um, save as, and I want to go to the drop down menu and select a JPEG. And I'm gonna keep the same name, make sure that the profile is checked for sRGB to make sure that your colors look good online, and then click save. Um, for the JPEG options, you can definitely go 10 here if it's for social media. I really only use 12 if I'm sending it off to the print lab. You could go even smaller, but there's really no reason to. And then for format options, always go baseline. Uh, lots of systems can have issues with the progressive scan. It's really outdated stuff, um, no need for that. Um, so there you go, there's start to finish, a composite with a uh, pet head swap, adding the lasers in, and through to the finished product.